Hello everyone, welcome back. So once again, it's time to cut our hay field. This is gonna be our second cutting. And uh, it's really actually been needing to be cut for the last couple weeks. So you're gonna see there's a lot of blooms on the alfalfa out here. But I've taken the time to go through the sickle bar mower even more. So I've gone through this thing about three times now. And since the last video, I've actually went ahead and I replaced all the rock guards that are on here. That's the bottom cutting surface for the sickle bar. So I'm hoping that this thing is going to cut really well. I did kind of run it around the property and, and try it out. It didn't seem to have any problems. In fact, I kind of ran it over the dam of the pond and I, and I clipped a lot of pretty thick brush with it and it, and it cut that stuff as well. So I'm hoping this thing does a lot better this time around. So I'm trying to improve upon the first time that we cut hay. So, that, you know, just trying to get better as we go. So one other issue we had with the sickle bar mower is when you're trying to turn, you really have to hit um, your right brake and try to do a really tight 90. Well, the brakes on here are crap. They're not very good brakes. They don't, they're, they don't work very well. So I did adjust the brakes and tried to tighten them up. So hopefully the brakes are, are going to work a little bit better today and we can turn a little bit tighter. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be starting out getting the hay field cut and just see if we can improve upon last time. Now the hay field is definitely about half the height of first cutting. It has been super dry here. Um, in fact, we, had, we went about a month and a half without hardly any rain. And then as soon as it got to the point in time where I needed to cut the hay field, We've got about five inches of rain in the last week. So it has rained pretty good, um, you know, here lately, but uh, overall the hay field is is just not as thick as it was that first time around definitely it's probably going to be half the bales of hay we had on the first cutting so we should have once i cut this tonight i should have three full days of good weather to hopefully get this all dried and baled so i'm going to go ahead and hop on here and let's get cutting the hay
Well, that took me about three hours to get the hayfield cut. So I did have a few problems. So one of them, the biggest problem I had was probably that outer shoe there on the end of the sickle bar. Um, it came loose and it started kind of shaking and rattling and um, one of the bolts fell out and the other one became loose. So I had to end up going back to the barn, putting new bolts uh, in there. And then I ended up putting lock nuts on there instead. And I got that tightened down real good. And that seemed to do, I mean, everything was fine after that, it didn't come loose. So that was from me working on this and I obviously didn't get that torqued down very well. Plus it didn't have any lock washers on it. So I had just, you know, I ended up putting lock nuts on there instead. So hopefully that won't come loose again. And then the, uh, then the dogs, they ended up trying to come out here. And I chased those dogs around and chased those dogs around and tried to get them to go away. And finally I got them to go away and then right at the end they came back again. And uh, yeah, so the dogs really slowed me down as well. Um, Cause that stopped me from being able to cut hay with the dogs out here. So one other thing I did differently this time had to do with the turnbuckle. So that this turnbuckle last time with all the, the way this vibrates, um, it ended up kept on turning and tilting the mower cutter upward. It kept on, you know, tilting this backwards. So this time um, there is this, there's this little flapper here that threads up and down this. This is like a little jam nut. So I was able to get that up against the turnbuckle and then tighten it down and got that locked into place and then this didn't move on me this time. And one thing I just noticed as I was talking to you guys is this pin tried to work its way out. Look at that. Came unclipped. And that is not good. Right there. Oh. I'm going to have to maybe set this down. Okay, let me see if this will let me get that back in there. I did not notice this. Come on. This is supposed to lock in there. Somehow that vibrated loose as well. That's interesting. back up to where it was level. So I am running the cutter pretty much level while I'm doing this. Okay. So when I started cutting the hay field, I still had hay wanting to kind of bunch up and clog up on the sickle bar. Now, last time I did have some people say that uh, the grass was probably wet and I did notice there was a little bit of moisture on the tire um, when I was doing the outside section. So I do think that uh, there was still moisture in the outside and I had most of the trouble in that shorter stuff that was on, you know, on the outside of the hay field. Once I got to the middle, I really didn't have too much of a problem. My biggest problem was probably if I got it clogged up during a turn or if I got kind of off track and I ran the sickle bar through some of the grass that was already cut and then it would want to clog up right there next to the uh, wobble box. So anyway, still a learning experience, still trying to get used to this. But um, yeah, we'll just kind of keep working at it and finally get this to where maybe we're cutting the hay field halfway decent with the sickle bar. I know it's not the ideal thing to, to cut a hay field with, but it is um, cost effective for us being a small little, you know, we only got a few acres here, only three acres of hay right now. I'm going to go ahead and put the tractor up for tonight and we'll come back in the morning and we'll bring out the hay tedder and ted the field.